All right, homosexuality. Let's talk about this. Um, if you've read the blog already, you're probably already upset with me. Uh, if you have not read the blog, you'll probably be upset with me by the end of the video. Uh, either way, I want to talk about a few things that I talk about in the blog itself. I won't rehash everything. Uh, please read the blog. There's actually some really good stuff there. But why am I talking about uh, the issue of homosexuality? I, I have a few reasons. Um, the first reason I want to talk about it is because you know the Bible talks about sex. Quite frankly, it talks about you know uh, the purposes of sex, the God-given purposes of sex. Uh, what is the right kind of sex? What is the wrong kind of sex? What is sexual uh, holiness? What is sexual purity? What is sexual sin? So it's very important to Scripture, but. Um, one of the other reasons I want to talk about it is because it's been made into a pretty big issue and not necessarily by the church. Yes, the church is definitely talking about it. We're talking about it among many other issues. A lot of people say, you know, why does the church only talk about homosexuality? We're not. I've been in church for a long time. It's not the only issue we're talking about. There might be a few churches out there. Uh, you got your Fred Phelps out there, so, uh, you know. Uh, but, you know, by and large, I've never been to a church where homosexuality is the only issue uh, where we're talking, that, that we're talking about. However, it has been made into an issue by homosexuals themselves. They've pushed this into the political arena, they've gotten people talking about it, and we're talking about it just like everybody else. If everybody's talking about it, and lots of people go to church and are part of everybody, it's going to be discussed at length by people in the church and by the church itself as an institution. So, because we do have something to say about it. If the Bible says something about, you know, sex and human sexuality and holiness and homosexuality specifically, the church will will talk about that. And so it's a big hot button issue right now, so we're discussing it. Um, but it's been pushed into the political arena where it's talked about in abstractions. The homosexual community has, you know, been pushing gay rights uh, and, and gay marriage for uh, a while now and they're making slow strides uh, some states are saying yes it's okay and some states are saying absolutely not we're gonna make a constitutional amendment stating as much but either way it's being discussed it's being talked about and some people are just at the point where they're going it's gonna be legal in all 50 states so we might as well just get used to it I'm not of that mindset it may be true I'm not personally of that mindset we'll see what the future holds on that uh, but either way, the political process is talked about in abstractions. And, you know, gay people have, as a strategy, adopted speaking about homosexuality in abstractions. What I find problematic is the church has been invited to this table of dialogue, so to speak. And I'll talk about that table in just a minute. But we've been invited to the table of dialogue. And uh, when we start to talk about it, when we start to say things like, you know, homosexuality is wrong, or the Bible says that homosexuality is a sin, we're asked, well, do you know any gay people? Because if you don't know any gay people, you can't actually adequately uh, comment on whether this is right or wrong. And now it's not just gay people saying that. I hear many people who are in Christian circles, my friends who are you know, believers and followers of, of Jesus, who say things like, well, you can't judge homosexuals unless you know a, a homosexual personally. This is not rational. We don't say that about anything else. Uh, we don't say, well, uh, unless you know someone who is a murderer, you can't adequately judge murder. Unless you know someone who is a thief, you can't adequately uh, judge stealing. Unless you know someone who is a child molester, you can't adequately um, you know, judge molestation. And, and now I'm not trying to compare you know, homosexuals to, to thieves and murderers and child molesters, okay? So don't hear me trying to use rhetoric to do that. Um, I'm trying to show that the argument is not valid. I don't have to know someone personally in order to say this kind of behavior is aberrant and wrong and sinful. Now, that also doesn't mean that I don't have people in my life who are gay and lesbian. I am personally invested, invested in a few people who, are, who identify as, as gay and lesbian. They know that I love them, that I care for them, that I think the greatest choice that they could ever make in their life is to give their life to Jesus Christ and let him transform them from the inside out. They also know that I disagree fundamentally with the with the the lifestyle choice or the orientation they have chosen to identify with. They know this. Um and there's no two bones uh, there, there's no two ways about it. But and, and this is a big but they also still know that I'm I'm still their friend. 
I'm still their friend. I, I don't condone how they're I don't condone how they're living. My friendship with them is not an endorsement of how they're living. They know exactly where I stand. If they ask me about it, I will repeat it over and over again. But the big thing that I really repeat over and over again is that Jesus loves them. But he doesn't want them to stay that way. He, you know, he wants them to become just like Jesus. Um, but, you know, to, to quote Max Licato back from, I think, like the late 90s. Great book. Pick it up. Either way. Um, but uh, one of the arguments that's also been brought up is about Jesus. Well, Jesus never spoke about homosexuality. Show it to me in the red letters. And I find it funny when people say this because people, if you ask the same people, do you believe Jesus is God? Yes, I believe Jesus is God. Do you believe the Bible is God's word? Yes, I believe the Bible is God's word. So, Jesus is God. The Bible is God's word. The Bible has spoken about homosexuality as a sin. Nowhere does it say that it's right. And Jesus is God, and God wrote the Bible. Yes, he inspired men to do it, but God wrote the Bible. So, Jesus did actually speak about homosexuality. He didn't speak about it in his earthly ministry specifically. But all throughout history, he has definitely spoken on it. And he also definitely affirms heterosexual marriage. I mean, he doesn't come out and say, I affirm heterosexual marriage. But his first public miracle, Jesus turns water into wine, where? At a wedding. At a wedding in Cana between a man and a woman. He is there affirming the Genesis account of a man leaving his father and mother and cleaving unto his wife. Jesus also constantly affirms the law of Moses over and over and over and over again. And in the law of Moses, you have prohibitions against all sorts of sexual sin, including homosexuality. So, you have Jesus essentially inspiring scripture. You have Jesus affirming heterosexual marriage at a wedding. And you have Jesus affirming the law of Moses, which prohibits homosexual activity. Jesus speaks about homosexuality. It may not be in red letter and red letters, but the black letters are just as important. But lastly, I want to talk about being invited to the table. We've been invited to the table. The church has been invited to the table under false pretenses. Under the guise of dialogue, we've been invited to actually make us look antiquated and backwater and backwards. If you disagree, you are intolerant, you are bigoted, you are hate-mongering, and you are homophobic. This is part of a protracted strategy laid out in the book After the Ball. It's right there in black and white. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, okay? I'm not one of those guys who's like, well, it was really a missile that hit the the the, tower, the Twin Towers, or uh, it was really a missile that hit the Pentagon, where's the debris? I'm not one of those guys at all. I'm a rational thinker. I think through all of this stuff. I've been wrestling with it, you know, for, uh, for a number of years, but, I mean, on this particular blog itself, I've been wrestling with it for a few weeks now. But either way, what I, what I wanted to say is we've been invited to the table under false pretenses. I am not against being invited the, to the table. Some people think that we shouldn't be at all talking with homosexuals or the gay community. I am perfectly fine being invited to the table, but it has to be under actual, you know, an actual desire for, for dialogue. Not a, hey, come to the table for, for dialogue. We want to get to know you. We know that you disagree with us and we disagree with you. But we want to have a healthy dialogue. But not really. We want to invite you to the table so that we can make you look bad to the rest of the world. No, I, I don't want that. I want you disagree with us. We disagree with you. Let's talk about this and find a third way where we can respect one another and, and not violate our own principles in, 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 in so doing. If we have to walk away from the table and agree to disagree, we do that. But if we can walk away from the table and agree to disagree without one party, you know, villainizing the other, I think that is important. And, when, and more importantly, when I say that something is a sin, when the church says that something is a sin, or that people are sinners, we, we're always saying that all people are sinners. All people are sinners, you know, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. This is what scripture says. All of us are sinners. Not just homosexuals, heterosexuals also. But when I say that something is a sin, I am not saying, well, this is a sin, and therefore this person who is doing this particular kind of sin has absolutely no value in society whatsoever. Gay people need to be, you know, 
put behind a, an electric fence. Some guy actually preached that gay people needed to be put behind electric fences or on an island where they can't procreate and so they'll just die off. I was like, that is one of the most hateful, that was actual hateful speech. That's real hateful speech. You know, tying up Matthew Shepard to a uh, to a, a fence post and leaving him there to die, that's hateful. Uh, Fred Phelps saying, God hates fags, that's hateful. Me saying... Homosexuality is a sin. I fundamentally disagree with it. I, I believe that scripture you know, paints a picture of heterosexual marriage as God's ideal. When I say that, that's not hateful. That's not hate-mongering. That's just disagreeing. It's strongly disagreeing, but it's just disagreeing. I'm not homophobic. Again, I have gay friends. I don't hate gay people. Again, I have gay friends. Um, you know, if, if that's the litmus test, you know, do you have any gay friends? I have some. Um, but I, I just, I want to be invited to the table and have actual dialogue. with Like with me and my friends, we have actual dialogue. There, there's not a, a false pretense there. But when there's a false pretense on the part of an actual movement, we don't really want to talk to you, but we're going to pretend that we do, I think that, that just short circuits everything and nobody gets anywhere. So I want to find a third way where we have actual dialogue and that we can all stick to our principles on the matter.